Tailpipes and Tacos monthly cruise in at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy, Texas. It's the In Wheel Time Car Show, your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. King Conrad DeLong. We need more Jeff Zeke. Yes, we do. And the fabulous David mm. Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. And joining us right now in our remote studio here at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy <laughs> is uh, a Al Capone. No. <laughs> and we, uh, we, <laughs> really, we really appreciate uh, your stuff. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, uh, we really appreciate you stopping by. When that car pulled in, I thought, oh, my gosh, Al, you've gotten into Al's pocket. I, actually, they're available, and we've ordered them. I found the personalized places that say A. Capone. Do you really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are the odds? Stan yeah. Holt, uh, the uh, founder of the Loopy Tortilla franchise, and uh, a dear friend, racing aficionado all of the things above what is it and boy is it bad to the bone it's a 36 buick that's a buick a buick a buick a 36 buick what uh buick 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 got it inline flat eight inline eight no it's not flat it's not a flat head no it's overhead oh Bow. wow and the motor, that's why the hood's is so Is it a Buick special? That's why the, yeah. It is. It's a special. That's why the hood's so long. It's, I a, think it's a 38 it's, special. It's special to me. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, my God. Yes. It's special to me, too. You, you can see. We're going off the rails here. I don't know, I don't know who the audience is this morning, but you can see in the backseat of that car how girls used to get in trouble. Oh, boy. Yeah. Really? And there's a cigarette lighter and ashtray for every passenger wow <laughs> well so 1936 incorrect and the back window slides back just enough to let cigarette smoke out to get out yeah but she can't get out you know, so. oh god yes. oh boy and, and it's and it's a bustle back what in the in its day bustle back a bustle back. window bustle back and you can stretch your legs straight out and not touch the front seat are you serious yeah but there's no front seat and there's a foot rest for traction you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> To hold your place. Right? <laughs> oh, oh my God. days. Oh, oh my days. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 And suicide doors. Suicide doors. How cool is that? It's a cool one. What's the one that? Yeah. Oh, it's a sweet glass. So, where did you find this car? And you have. What was the history of it? They didn't have turn signals. Oh, huh. they didn't I forgot about that. They became available in '38. Okay, so we got some aftermarket uh, turn signal to those companies looking aftermarket. Oh, yeah. it's on the the shifter shifter yeah. Yeah. big piece of chrome right. and a lever on it. Where, where are we going to put the lights? Where are we going to put the lights? Well, we put 12 on in it. Jerry was able to change all the bulbs to the 1157s with the exactly the and filaments. So it works actually in the taillights and in the, the little fender lights. Oh, okay. Okay. 
But you wouldn't have to have that to pass inspection because the car was made without the lights. Yeah, you would have to have that to make it home from Loopy's after dinner. <laughs> yes, you would. Because back then, if you decided that you wanted to signal somebody, it was hand signals. Hand out the window. And hand out the today, love. Today you get shot. Now you get shot. Somebody yeah. think you're giving him yeah, the bird. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a great old car. Not not super valuable, but it's uh, it's not. Mm -mm. But no, it's, it's a great conversation piece. I mean, it really has piece. that look. And uh, it's just a you know, two couples going out to dinner. It, it's just a lot of fun. What an yeah. absolute yeah. hoot! It, it, in absolute. the fall or the spring. Oh, in the fall or the spring. Yep. Okay, now we can move on and talk about the Ranchero. That's a great car. So you know me. Is I that a is that a fifty eight? Fifty eight, and what's different between fifty eight and fifty seven is the hood. It a, has a functional scoop on the hood. The fifty eight does. Fifty eight did. Oh, I didn't realize it was functional. But I have you know I have me down. I have a story for everything. Yes. We're at a Mecham auction in Houston. I'm just the left. She looks like she's on the right, and there's one on the right. However, and I start getting into the car. This one starts getting. Then it gets to like twenty four thousand dollars. Is that the original paint color scheme? Yes. Okay. And it's been repainted. It's been repainted. Yeah. They did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. I redid a lot of the chrome. It just had that southern car chrome, you know. Right. Yeah. So we sandblasted it. And did, yeah. We and repolished the stainless steel. The fun stuff. You know, it wasn't like a you know start over project. I have a '57 Ford Fairlane uh, 300 coupe that we're about to start on, and we are going to make a, a resto mod out of it. It has the T-Bird engine. It's an automatic. So we're going to airbag the car. We're going to paint it that um, it's a Lexus silver, atomic silver. But it'd be cool because it has the gold band. Yes. Like the Fairlane 500 mm -hmm. on the side. And uh, that's, that's going to be a fun project. By the way, did you happen to see the 64 Mercury Marauder 427? I did. Yeah. My, my close friend in high school, family, were Mercury. You know, back in the day, people were Chevy or Ford right, or right, 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 Chrysler right. people. They were Mercury people. Yep. And they had the one with the back glass that went down. Yeah. Turn, turnpike. Turnpike. Right. Monterey Turnpike. But they did have a Marauder. And, and it wasn't just that the back glass went up and down. It was tilted in at the bottom <laughs> and went up and down. It was the, it was the weirdest <laughs> I looking know, thing. I know. 
<laughs> it's back. Uh, they let Mercury do what they want to to some degree back in those. And he drove a car I still would like to have. He had a, um, a 65 uh, Comet Caliente. Okay. A Comet Caliente. And it had, it was that. Uh, That's what you that need brilliant next. brilliant blue with a vinyl top. And the top looked like it was real small, you know, the car. It was very cool. It's a 289. Yeah. Um, That's what I need next. Yeah. <laughs> How is the collection? We'll look for one for you. <laughs> Collection's doing well. Bought a couple of late model cars. You what'd did? You, what'd you yeah. get? A, an elderly gentleman down the street from us in Conroe had a, 90, uh, a 2012 Mercedes 350. You Cab- talked Cab- about Cab- that Cabriolet. last time you did were I? around. Yeah. Okay. So I, I ended up buying the car. It is just a really good car. And uh, I'll tell you the story about it. It, it. He smoked, but not in the car. So he, sat in, he sets in the garage, you know, and he smokes, and it got into the top. So we had had it treated, and um, uh, shampooed the carpet, the headliner, and so on and so forth. It was just a faint, faint aroma uh-huh. odor. Yeah. And faint. so, what did you do? Well, I, you know, I don't like the pine tree and all that smell and stuff in there. Sheila wears a perfume called Laugh. Oh, God. So <laughs> I took the filter out. We put a new filter in, uh-huh. and I sprayed it two or three times uh-huh. and put it back so in. So it smells like Sheila every time you turn on the air conditioning. But when I drive it, I get a direction. <laughs> <laughs> Is that for the traction? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We must have had an audio yeah, problem yeah. there. <laughs> and, oh, <beep>. I'm back. <laughs> and that's got the three on the tree. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's but it could. It could. It yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, I'm sorry, Sheila. If you're listening. great story. Great story. <laughs> that, that, that is, that is no, a, he's not. Going, I can't believe he <laughs> See, says what it's what tough. you what you didn't realize is that's all on camera. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh-huh, that <laughs> camera right there. Is that, it's good. Well, then, you, then you can see it too. It's, yeah. It's just YouTube. Oh, just YouTube. Eight, eight and a half okay. million yeah. viewers. Yeah, oh, that, later. It's pretty late in life for me to lose my career, so <laughs> no, you're not I'm, I'm good. I'll skid past that. Now <laughs> I want to talk to you about drag racing and the news that oh, yeah, uh, yeah. reached worldwide today, th- or this week anyway. It's the big block. Yeah, well, yeah, let's talking. behave. Yeah, let's behave. Uh, that uh, Baytown is closing yep. after uh, next year's Spring Nationals. It's actually supposed to close after this one. The one we just had. Well, it was, was it supposed to. Yeah, it was reasonably planned that way. Yeah, yeah and it, but the property sold uh, some manufacturing group, my, as I understand it, from Seth Angel, and uh, COVID slowed their project down, so they leased it back for another year. Yeah, they year. bumped it. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so well, that was good. I think they're after they settle in, they're still going to go on with the sale. Uh, the Angels are not going to build another track. They're out of the business, so I don't know what's going to happen in Houston. Mm. Well, yeah. but you know, we, I, I was thinking about that and you know there was a time between uh houston international speedway down on the gulf freeway and the baytown track there was a gap there, there wasn't a, a race tra- a, a drag strip here in town right. and Quarter uh, mile, right. I, i'm hoping that uh, somebody will step up to the plate and you, you know, know it's going to be the stan holtz raceway well it could be it's, it's all kind of going to eighth mile uh, every, yeah. yeah not class racing like we do right it's all kind of going to eighth mile, and uh, which I don't care. A, for. a little bit driven by the television series right. of, uh, of uh, Street Outlaws. Oh, that, that that's that's no where, prep kings guys. That's where the fan base is going. Right, right. You know, um, well because it's younger. It is, and that's where it's headed. So I don't know where Top Fuel and all that stuff is going to go. You know, well, so. I thought for sure that um, you know Texas Motorplex would take that spring date. We used to have two dates here. Why not give them a spring and a fall date up there? At least it keeps it central and it keeps it. Do they have a drag strip? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never been there. You've, you've never, never been to the Texas Motorplex? I've been through a NASCAR race there. No, 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 no. no, no. Not in, Texas in, World Speedway. Oh, that Motorplex. Oh, yeah. Ennis. Oh, yeah. 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 I think I'm trying to put that track out of my mind. Okay. Must be well, because you didn't There's have probably good, a story behind that. Because you didn't have good luck there or what? No, it's a dry county. I do very well there. But, um, you know, they, they deserve it there. They're just not taking care of the facility. Ennis is a dry county, too. And that doesn't stop us. No. <laughs> but it doesn't, doesn't even slow us down. You just can't <laughs> buy it. doesn't mean you can't bring it with yeah, you. But they, they sell. They get a license to sell at the race and so forth, beer. But um, they're just not taking care of the facilities. That's too and bad. the racers don't enjoy racing there. 
Well, you know, when Billy Meyer built that track, it was the latest state of the art, oh, yeah. and uh, it was it was very oh, nice. But yeah. th they don't put any money yeah, into it. I probably burned a, b a bridge just now because the track manager and I are out there are friends, and I get a, I always get a good parking spot, mm -hmm. and, but in the dust bowl back in the back, I mean, I would just keep, I would just keep going. They say that they're going to do put a lot of paving in it and step it up, and that may be their thinking because Houston's going away. Right. If they could get two a year, well, that's an opportunity for them. Yeah. The day, two a year yeah. would work. Well, I, I, I read that they were considering other tracks that I've never even heard of before. Hmm. I know that there are you know, a, still a smattering of tracks across the United States that I guess are capable of handling a national event at a quarter mile. But um, it just makes sense to me that the Motorplex would take the spring date because Houston used to have a spring and fall yes, race. Right. And uh, I don't know whether they had a spring and fall race up in Dallas or not, but they certainly could. <laughs> Who wouldn't want they, a spring they, and they fall day up there? I, I hadn't thought about it until just now. A track I really like is that little uh, Alamo track in San Antonio. Yep. Yeah. The okay. one right there right along there the speedway? Yeah, right yeah. There in yeah but it's, it's not real big. I no. mean, as far well, as the surrounding they, they have a lot of space. And I had talked about it one time about with my sons about putting the loopies on the freeway right there, <clears throat> which would – make payments all year long, and then make it an NHRA track. There was a deal. Breaking news. With Breaking news. NHRA. I understand. I don't. I haven't read this from NHRA, but NHRA, the Dallas, Ennis track and the Houston track, in their agreement, there could not be another track in Texas for national event track. Wow. So since Houston's going away, it leaves an that, opportunity. that track has been tied up in litigation since it's conception you know i have not been to a lot of tracks across the country but i do understand there are quite a few tracks that are in need of the maintenance and oh, in need are. of yeah. the extra money put in there for the investment that's what i understand yeah. so there's an opportunity there why is nhra not kind of like pushing back no racer ever questions what nhra does because you're not if you want to keep raising well, well no that's you're just that's you're you're applying rationale to an irrational situation you're, you're <laughs> never going to Never figured out. Understand it, it but tracks are all Pat, privately owned. Pat Jeffrey, on a uh, good friend of mine that built No Problem Raceway, proved it could be done and be profitable. And he uh, started out. This is going to be a racer's track. I said, Pat, you'll be like the rest of them in two years. He said, No, I won't. And he didn't. It was all about the racer. He's the first one that I know of to put a bar in the bottom of the tower. And he sold every drink. You know, from Crown Royal to whatever you want to drink for three bucks. Oh, Nobody, wow. He did a crawfish boil on Friday nights. Nobody left the track. If you weren't a drinker, you'd have a, a gambler's race. The money you put in, the winner won it all. The track didn't get anything. But he kept it manicured and neat and sharp. And Pat was everywhere at that track. And the races would sell out. The, the, they would do the Sports National would sell out. Well, they didn't have a whole lot of seating, though. Oh, they can they can, they can. Park 800 rigs out there. Oh, seating. I mean, they had all they needed because points races have never been known for drawing big crowds. Right, yeah, it's, right. the, it's, the, it's the racers that it's but about. The, the not point the is if you took a track like the Alamo track and you ran it properly and fixed it up properly, it will be a build that they will come is my opinion. You know. Right. Well, it, it's been a couple of years, but i actually been down that track a couple of times and, and covering some events and stuff. And it was a, I mean, it's, it's from a great, that perspective, it was a, great. A great track. The The story is, is that the, the land at the end of the track, where the sand pit is, they need another 200 feet to run top fuel cars there. And the guy that bought it couldn't get along with the farmer who owned that Last land. Last oh boy. Feet. And he bowed his neck and, and put cows out there. Said, you're not, you're not going to have it. Not going to happen. So it went bankrupt and, you know, all the financial issues and so forth that, that those things go through, and it's never happened. So some sharp business night guy needs to go in there and say, look, you're going to be a partner in this thing. You know, you're, you're going to get a percentage of what this does, and you're going to get tickets at a national event and so on and so forth. Just think about where it is. You're 30 minutes from one of the coolest towns in this yeah. whole country. You're only, what, two and a half hours from here. And Three. they're not going to be building homes out there because it, it, there's, there's no homes out there. No, and there's plenty of places to build homes. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think, really, if you had a, even if it wasn't a loopies, I mean, loopies we know will work. 
But Everywhere. Look, look, yeah, look how close that is to where you're going for that experience, the San Antonio experience. You got a loopies. You can stop there on the way going or on the way back. And, and, and you've got good metropolitan draw from San Antonio, from Houston, yep. from Austin, and from Corpus, you know, all of those and people. I, I said, you know, and then they had a gas station next door. You know, you don't have to do Bucky's, but a really nice they run – yeah. Right, gas station. I mean, it's just yeah. The way you get to do all that before you get into San Antonio, you but could put it. But it's making money 365 days a year, right? Not just right, right. That, yeah, that the property is generating revenue. And car shows and concerts, and there's so much you can and do. And charging stations. Oh. <laughs> I don't think Stan was listening to I, I all of our EV stuff. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I, I can't. Uh, car and driver. I just got my last copy of that. It was the EV of the year. It was a Mustang. So. Yeah, and no. that's why it was the last. I, this is this is. <laughs> I have no. I don't have a chauvinistic bone in my body, but they have a female editor now. Yes, they do. And it has changed its dynamic. It's speaking to a different person. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I think that you know you heard that Lexus, not Lexus, uh, Tesla ran a nine a nine fifty at one hundred and fifty at a drag strip. Wow. Ford is coming out with a gasoline scent to put in your electric vehicle in case you miss that. I would have to get a wrapper odor. to put some teeth in that grill. You know, it looks like a. Yep. Exactly. Like we talked about that earlier. There, it's it's just flat. Like there's no grill there. Like it's been neutered. Like a P fifty one or something. <laughs> well, you know? Yeah, something. <laughs> Pick your grill. We'll put it on there for you. What yeah. were the What were those guys in Popeye called the goons? They had the hair around yeah, their yeah, ankles yeah. And, yeah, <laughs> and they had no mouth. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, that kind just, of thing. You know, wow. My son has one. He loves it. A great car. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, well, um, hey, thanks for uh, having us back out here. We love the Buick. Thank you. The we're Buick we're racing great. in Topeka, Kansas this coming weekend. Okay. Just a little plug for Loopy Tortillas. Yep. Got to say hello to the Emmons, as I always do. Uh, yep. Jerry was watching earlier. Was yep. he? Okay. Jerry was yeah. on. Oh, the nice one. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that puts the trophies back the behind his head while we're wallies. talking. Floating wallies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. floating wallies. Uh, floating wallies. <laughs> Stan, it's always good to see you. Thanks uh, so much. Thanks for, for having me. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. No, well, thank we, you very much. We appreciate it. You had a great turnout again today. Nice. You know. Yeah, it was It was uh, really stupid. And the, the, the numbers and the types of cars, and it's an ever-evolving crowd that you have here. Yeah. Uh, we is. talked to some guys, well, a couple of them, actually, first time here. Oh, really? I brought my old high school friend out here, and uh, he, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, That's I know. good to hear. So it, was, it was. It was fun. But thank you. Well, we're going to brainstorm. When you guys get finished working yep. today about the future, what we're going to do and so forth. We're ready. Something to talk about. All right. Cool. Yep. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, some of the stories making automotive news headlines. Uh, young consumers have been the most affected by the current shortage of available vehicles when looking to make a purchase. That, according to a study by GFK Automobility hmm. released Tuesday. Wow. Those in the 18 to 29 year age group were the most likely to change the purchase plans or opt for a different vehicle. Older consumers are showing they have the resources to wait out today's shortages, while younger buyers need to replace their vehicles quickly, sometimes by opting for a used or pre-owned car. Hmm. So Nice. I remember they used to talk about the subscription which you could swap your car out, but I guess that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Yeah, yeah, that subscription. So thing. you heard Ram announced a, a 1500 EV, uh, body on frame setup, expected to offer as much as a 500 mile driving range, which might help everybody's stress. Of, and I've seen pictures of it. I posted it on a. Our Facebook page, if you want to go see it, stunningly beautiful truck. Ford Motor Company is dropping the F-150 pickup's diesel engine option. What? After just three years because of low demand. No, no. Automaker no, no, informed no dealers <laughs> last week that it would no longer take orders for the three-liter power stroke diesel option after July 16th. The company still offers diesel engines, needless to say, in its Super Duty pickups, and they sell every one that they make. Yeah, they were going to offer a finance rate on, this, on the 150. No interest. <laughs> See you, fellas. Thank you. Um, HPD yep. leaving, leaving the property. Uh, Ford Motor Company is weighing plans to start shipping partially built vehicles. I read this. That yeah. are awaiting semiconductors or related components to dealerships around the country. A move that, if approved, would place responsibility on its retail network to complete the assembly once the chips are available. 
Only dealers who would choose to receive the unfinished vehicles would get shipments, and service technicians would be trained on how to install the chips, according to one of the sources of the story. Dealerships would be compensated for slightly less than an hour's worth of labor for each vehicle. I don't know what's entailed. I guess just pull the computer out, open it up, stick the chip in there, and away you go. Probably not a lot of work. Still unclear is whether the dealers would be responsible for the vehicles while they sit on their lots awaiting chips. Ford is considering shifting the strategy, the people said, to ease the glut of unfinished vehicles piling up on company-owned lots around the country so it can keep assembly plants running. By essentially moving the vehicles now, Ford would be able to get them into consumers' hands more quickly once the chips are ready instead of having to ship them in mass at a later date. Hmm. So you're saying that there's about $150 is holding up the sale of a $50,000 truck? Pretty much. But, you know, once it gets here... All the dealers are basically going to be doing is storing the vehicles on their lot until, until they get that, the chips. Well, it, yeah, they say chips. It'll be a module, and they'll just plug the module in. Well, because that's what you I'm saying, think. though. If it's an hour's labor to put it in, so maybe the part's, what, $400, 500000 right. That's still $1,000 maybe for a $50,000 truck that you can't buy. So we got to take a quick break. We do. Something's wrong. So we're going to yep. take this break right now. We're breaking. We're breaking. breaking. Here it is. Houstonian-owned Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has the most sought-after models in the Houston area today. When you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, you now have a place to go. General Manager Lincoln Stahl guarantees Bayway will beat any competitor's written price on the new vehicle you choose or pay you $1,000. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is easy to get to on Highway 225 near Beltway 8 in Pasadena. Whether it's online or in person, you're welcome like one of the family. BaywayChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com Tailpipes and Tacos, Houston's premier monthly car cruise-in returns Saturday, August 21st at two Loopy Tortilla Mexican restaurants in Katy and inside the Loop on the Southwest Freeway near Kirby. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods at two locations. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 and Katy and inside the Loop on the Southwest Freeway near Kirby. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in. Tailpipes and tacos at Loopy's inside the Loop on the Southwest Freeway in Kirby and in Katy on the Grand Parkway just south of I-10 where you'll see the In Real Time Car Show. Get your ride ready and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in at Loopy's in Katy and Kirby, August 21st, 8 to 11 a.m., weather permitting. You see all the new ceramic car wash cleaners on TV now, but John Gray at Gulf Coast Auto Shield has been using ceramic coatings on Houston's most expensive cars for years, and he'll tell you that nothing beats the real thing. Gulf Coast Auto Shield installs a coating over your paint that actually comes with a warranty. If you just picked up your Lambo, your Aston Martin, Porsche, Ferrari, any other exotic car, chances are your car will have company that have already found Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Now, you don't have to own an exotic. Maybe you got a truck, an SUV, or even an older vehicle that needs a little love. Well, let John Gray give it a look and give you an estimate on refurbishing that paint and making your vehicle look new again. How about getting a gift certificate for the wife's birthday or anniversary from Gulf Coast Auto Shield and tell her, honey, I know you love your car, so why don't we get it looking new again? It'll be the best gift ever, one that she'll never forget. Get hold of John Gray at gcautoshield.com or give him a call, 832-264-0670. Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Well, that's a wrap for another episode of the In Will Time Car Show. When you're on Facebook, please give us a like, tell your friends about us, and share our junk, if you will. You'll get Conrad's unicorn hunting features along with all things automotive all week long. (laughs) The In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and on InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available from your favorite podcast outlet. Special thanks to all of our guests today. The In Wheel Time Chief Engineer is the fabulous David Mm. Ainsley. Our Marketing Manager and Video Technical Director, we need more Jeff Zekin. We do. For booking agent and podcast man, Mike out of this world, Mars. Yes. His royalty, King Conrad DeLong. Uh-huh. I'm Don Armstrong. Be sure and join us each and every Saturday for our three-hour live broadcast across a multitude of audio and video streaming platforms and podcasts available at your favorite podcast multitude. provider. 
It's a big word. You're on the Smoke and Mirrors Network, and thank you for joining us. Today's show is produced by Frito Bandito. <laughs> Tonight, join the Gulf Coast Racing Series from Houston Motorsports Park for asphalt racing on the 3 8 mile. Be there. Racing begins at 6 o'clock, and I hope to see you there. So long for now, and we'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>